Hello and welcome back to more Vintage Cube Draft. This pack, no power. It's always the first thing you check for. Second thing I always check for is like utility lands or fetch lands. None of that here either. So this is actually a pretty weird opening pack. There's good cards in here. I'm definitely not denying it. But they're cards that you would like to pick up like second and third pick. Because ideally you spend your first pick, first couple picks on something that like keeps you open. Um, and then you can kind of get a feel for what's available in the draft, you know, like... If you get like a fourth pick to fair your Narset that tells you blue is somewhat open. First pick, it doesn't really tell you that much. And these cards are kind of more narrow. Well, this card, this card goes in base landing deck. It's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, like same with like Kiki Jiki, like you could take it, but then maybe Twin might not be open. Um, kind of feel like a stomping ground situation. I mean, this keeps me the most open. Could also just take Teferi, but I just don't like playing with Planeswalkers that much. So I'm going to take... Yeah, let's take the Stomping Ground and just stay open. Um, I guess one downside of taking Stomping Ground there specifically is I passed Kiki Jiki Primeval Titan, which are two cards that a lot of people like taking and playing. So like I'm kind of sending signals that red green is open while taking a red green land. So I think in hindsight, that was actually not the correct pick. Uh, Breeding Pool you could take, but maybe because of the specific like I'm sending signals regardless of what I do. Maybe I just speculate on Primeval Titan there. And then, you know, Stomach Ground isn't too much of a signal. But now, Primeval Titan is kind of a big signal to a lot of people. I don't think the card is that great, but a lot of people do. So now, you know, there's people drafting green behind me, most likely. So maybe I move into, like, Red Take Koth, Dire Fleet Daredevil, Halana, and Elena. All good cards. Um, I'm leaning towards Badlands. Uh, Jund is pretty fun to draft. And, you know, it's cube. You can kind of do whatever you want. So let's, let's have a little bit of fun here. There we go. Look at all this. Oh, beautiful black mana and then a mana tithe. Uh, I mean, I could take the Citadel. I think Wasteland is the best pick, but I'm going to take Colgon's Command just because I love the card. And Red Black is one of my favorite archetypes. It's just fun. Um, if we can wheel like a Bone Crusher Giant, that'd be really sweet. But yeah, I don't know. Cementing myself into like Jun stuff is. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think I'm supposed to take Black Braids here. She's very good. But, um,. She's probably going to come around, because I remember when she was in the queue before, people just, like, never respected her. But maybe I'm doing the same thing by passing Black Braids, thinking other people are going to pass Black Braids. You know what? Let's just, let's just take Braids. Oh, wait, no. I could take Goblin Guide and then Wheel Braids. Because this doesn't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Take Goblin Guide, take the cheaper card. Braids is going to come around. Absolutely no problem there. Uh, ooh, Gold Splint... Wait a second. Goldspin Dragon Black Braids is kind of spicy. The problem is Black Braids is really good when you play her like turn two off like Demonic uh, Dark Ritual or something. If you're like Goldspin Dragoning into Black Braids, that's really slow because she's not as oppressive when your opponent can develop a board. It's really key when you can like kill their lands quickly. Um, I like Blood Crypt. Maelstrom Pulse. Oracle's fine. Leovold doesn't really fit. And then Himbatoric is a good card too. I'm just going to take the fixing, though, because I just really want to draft red-black. Uh, Phyrexian Revoker is excellent. Goes in any deck. There's also Ravenous Chupacabra, but this card is kind of nutty. Goes in any deck. Uh, Olivia Crimson Bride. It's just so expensive. That's my problem with this. Like, it's fine in some decks. It's a pretty cool effect, right? It comes into play. You attack. You get another creature back. Um, problem is that they kill Olivia. You're just kind of done for. I like Firebolt. Concealed Courtyard can set us up to go into Mardu. But I think Firebolt's actually a good enough card that I'm just going to take it here. Being able to like kill something and then get it back, kill something else is good. Scrap Heap Scrounger goes well with things we have going on. Uh, we have the Black Mana for it. It's Recurrent Threat. Text for 3, cost 2. I like that. Figure of Destiny is good. Massacre Worm is a bit expensive for my taste, but I like the rest. Uh, Kiki came around. That's interesting. Also, a lot of white cards came around too. So it's possible I'm being pushed into, like, Mardu. I'm not upset about it, because I don't think I'm taking Empty. Spear of Heliod's pretty bad. Desperate Ritual's pretty bad. Kiki Jiki's just expensive. So I'll speculate on the Selfless Spirit here. Okay, you know what? All the cards we wanted kind of came around. There's a Sacred Foundry, because Red-White is definitely feeling open. So I can take that. Um, Koth is good. Red definitely feels open. So I could take Koth and not pass too many signals, like, of people going into Red. Uh, Daredevil's good, but it is a bit replaceable. Uh, what do I want? Do I want Koth? I think he's replaceable. I'm just going to take the fixing here. Oh, <laughs> Bonecrusher Giant coming around is an excellent sign. 
Uh, this was not the Hymn to Torok pack. Really? Someone took braids? Oh boy. Alright, well, that's what I get, I suppose. So, I think I'm gonna have to move out of black. Take like a Hero of Blade Hold here? Ugh, I don't love the card, but... That's what happens when you get greedy, I suppose. Uh, Huntmaster of the Fells, I have Stomping Ground. Scavenging Ooze is there too. But I guess Disenchant is fine. In some matchups, I'll love to have Disenchant. Although green is open too now. This is weird. Black was... <laughs> yeah, someone took him to Torok and Black Braids. Which I guess is what happens, right? I passed some black cards in the earlier picks and I took fixing over it. Um, and then someone moved into black, which makes sense. Olivia goes last pick. I just don't think this card is particularly playable in most cases. So, you know, that kind of makes sense to me. Um, so we're probably in Mardu colors. Uh, Lion Sash and Gideon are both just super good. Um, I... Huh. This is tough. Because I'm going to wheel something from this pack. Probably Tide Hollow Skull or maybe Shriek Maw. I don't think Steamkin's good in a multicolor deck. So, yeah, we'll keep that in mind. So, my thought is, I basically, I want Gideon and Lion Sash. And this is a common situation you'll find yourself in. What order do I take them in? Because I think they're relatively similar power level. Lion Sash being maybe better uh just because it's cheaper and just does insane things um they're similar power level though and gideon goes in a lot more decks i think people like take gideon and splash him in like planeswalker control lion sash you kind of want to be in white aggro and given how late selfless spirit and hero of blade hold went i think lion sash has a better chance of coming around so i'm gonna take gideon even though i think lion sash is the card i would want more for my deck most of the time just because again they're similar, but I'm trying to maximize my overall equity. Because if I can get both, that's way better than just being able to get one. Uh, here we have Cathar Commando, Ember Shieldbreaker, Showdown of the Scalds. I actually don't love Library in these decks. We're a bit more proactive, we don't have any power, and we don't have that many one-drops. So Library is just going to end up slowing us down most of the time if it's in our opener. Uh, we could take Scrubland. That does let us splash this Colicon's Command a bit easier. And just having, yeah, you know what? I love Mardu, like, fixing dot deck. Uh, we could take Thoughtseize. Polluted Delta can grab Badlands and Scrubland. Elspeth, Incinerate, Steam Vents. I mean, this is, this is a tri-land for us. Sure. <laughs> this is not the correct way to do it. You're supposed to, like, stick to one color combination, take, like, Eidolon and, like, go mono red or whatever, but... Mardu aggro is something I very much enjoy, regardless of how good it is. <laughs> so we're just going to do that. Now I could take Eidolon of the Great Revel if I want to. Maybe Vryn Wingmare comes around. Uh, do I want that? Eidolon of the Great Revel in the same deck as Hero of Bladehold is a bit tricky. But let's go for it. <laughs> Why not? I'm here. We can do a thing. Uh, Sulfuric Vortex. Snuff out. I have quite a few swamps. Casting free... Uh, Doom Blades is pretty nice. Karma Guide's too expensive for us. Red Elemental Blast is whatever. I might take this snuff out. Sulfuric Vortex seems like it might come around, and this is... We don't have much removal. This is a really excellent removal spell if you're an aggressive deck. Uh, we have green for Grist, right? The one Stomping Ground. Unfortunately, you can't get it with Polluted Delta. Um, so I think I'm just going to lean into Young Pyromancer. Wooded Foothills is also tempting, actually. That grabs all of my mana. You know what? Just do that. Because if Grist comes around, then we can take her. Alright, Burst Lighting is good. Custody Lich is good. Hazaret's pretty decent. Um, I do like Hazaret. She's just like the best card to have when you're mulliganing because you just go like three lands Hazaret plus like Firebolt or whatever is your five land hand, five card hand, and then you draw land, play Hazaret. She's indestructible and win the game. Because uh, I took Snuff Out for removal, so that's fine. Custody Lich is an interesting top end card. I think we're going to take Burst Lightning. I already have two 4-drops. Ooh, Goblin Rabble Master. I like that. Fireless Tracker is interesting. I do have Stomping Ground, so it's possible I could play it. But let's let's keep things a little bit sane and not go <laughs> full 4-color aggro. The, the deck that I have with the worst overall win rate is 5-color aggro. Um, but I do have some trophies with it too. So <laughs> it's fun. It's just a bit high variance in like basically how your fixing lines up with your colors. Because one key part, if you're trying to do like nonsense like this, is you need like a base set of colors with good fixing for that. 
and then easy splashes. So in this case, I'm essentially a red-white deck, and I'm splashing black for Kolgon's Command and Snuff Out. Um, and my fixing for black is pretty incidental and pretty good, but it's not like costing me a whole bunch. Um, and then if I end up going green, like that's fine too. The problem becomes when you have a lot of fixing that's specific to your splash color. So our Gambit paid off, we get Lion Sash, pretty happy about this. Nashi Moon Sage Sign is also tempting, but it's four mana and it's also double black if you want to play it on turn three. My fixing is good for a splash. It's not really good for a double costed card. So I'm going to take this. But uh, yeah, so, oh my gosh, <laughs> we have everything. What is happening here? Shodan of the Scalds versus Cathar Commando. Hang on, I got to think about this. I think Shodan's just insane. Um, so yeah, if I was going black and then I had like Tireless Tracker or whatever in the same pack, um, I could see if you get like a black green land that can't be fetched, like not Verdant Catacombs, but like one of the bad fixing. Having a lot of those lands can really mess up your mana base. Also having a lot of basics. I think I'm going to take Incinerate here. I already have Stomping Ground. I don't have any green cards right now, so I don't really need to take Taiga or whatever. Rin Wingmare is pretty good. Um, gives me disruption against some of the decks. Light up the stage is also tempting, but I just took Showdown of the Scalds, and this actually isn't the best light up the stage deck because I don't have that many one drops. I'll take Rin Wingmare. There's the Vortex. Do I want Vortex or Red Blast? Because Vortex is going to be hard. I'll take Vortex. Some matchups you just like, you just Vortex, you know? Wow. Wow. <laughs> This is the benefit of finding the open lane. So that's why, you know, I'm not fighting against or trying to hit black braids. Although, it would be pretty good with Dark Ritual. Play that much. Um, I'm not going to fight it. We're just going to draft the deck that's open and have a pretty good time with it. Uh, right now, I think I'm getting rid of Hero of Bladehold. Hero of Bladehold's good if you have, like, an amount of acceleration. But this deck is like a legacy or modern cube deck right now. So we can't turbo it out. It's just going to be too slow most of the time. And I'm not going to play it. Here, I think I'm going to splash this Dark Confidant, because why not? Again, this isn't the optimal way to do it. If you want to be, like, fully optimal, I think red is open enough. We could have gone mono red, but I love the Dark Confidant Sulfuric Vortex decks more than I should, probably. Ooh, Lightning Helix, Rishad Import, Luris. Uh, so I think Lightning Helix is a chance to come around. I love Rishad Import, but... Due to the constraints I've put on myself, and this is the benefit of going like mono red, you can fit non basic lands that are colorless in your mana base, and then you can be disruptive that way. I'm not really gaining too much advantage by going more colors except for the fun factor, which is an important factor. Um, but now I don't get access to Rishid and Port, which is like one of the best cards you could ask for in a mono red deck. I think it's better than Wasteland, obviously worse than Strip Mine, but somewhat comparable. Um, so yeah, I don't think I can play that. Lightning Helix is good. Lurus is tempting. Uh, with Selfless Spirit is pretty fun. In Dark Confidant, Lion Sash, Eidolon, I guess Distant Chance, probably not long for this world. Uh, Liquor Wisp is also tempting, but not amazing. I guess I'll just take this Lurus and then wheel the Lightning Helix. This can't play lands, right? Yeah. All right. That kind of hurts me, but it is what it is. Giver of Runes is good. I like Bloodthirsty Adversary too, actually. But I don't have that many spells, so I'm just going to take Giver of Runes, passing an Ophiomancer and whatnot. But I need cheaper cards. Thalia. Excellent Thalia. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> Layla's also insane. I already have Rinwing Mare. Um, Layla is just like the most messed up magic card in the cube right now. She's a, essentially a 3 mana 3-3 three, three haste, which is already a good rate. And she grows every single turn. And then also gives you cards to cast. So it's like card advantage, tempo, card draw, like just everything. Yeah, I'm going to take that wheel, Thalia. Here comes Chain Lightning, more interaction. Doretti's fine, Sword of Fire and Ice, no. I like Loon and Relic Order, but again, we're looking for cheaper spells, lowering our curve and all of that. Chromox. Oh, this pack is unfortunate, actually, because there's a lot of cards I would want. Gideon's good, Usher's good, Season Pyromancer's good, but... My deck's really slow, so having like a little bit of acceleration to put, you know, cast Goblin Rabble Master in turn two, that's what's going to take it over the edge, rather than having, I have like enough playables by far, so I don't really need extra playables. Um, oh my gosh, <laughs> Chandra? All right, I'll take a Chandra. Uh, Fluttermo is good, but Chandra can replace, I don't know, maybe I just play all of them. Uh, yeah, that's really nice. All right, we get... Abbot of Carol Keep, Student of Warfare, Douthy Voidwalker, or Croxa. 
Uh, my black fixing is maybe good enough for a Croxa. Abbot of Carol Keep is more tempting with Luris, although... Sacrifice it unless it escaped. You could just keep casting Crocs off Luris and hit them for three every turn. I'm also not certain if I'm going to play Luris. I don't have the white fixing for Student of Warfare or black fixing for Voidwalker, because I think those are the two best options. Um, I think I'm just going to take Abbot. Here we can take... I only have like two green fixing cards, so I don't think I'm doing that. I guess I could just take Elite Spellbinder for the sideboard. Or, you know, maybe I play instead of Rend Wingmare. Here comes the Lightning Helix. Liquor Wisp is just too intensive on our mana, so right now I don't think I'm main decking Luris or Disenchant. Uh, this is a lot of cards here. Take... No, I can't really play Assassin's Trophy. I'll take Condemn in the off chance I end up in an aggro mirror match. I don't think I like Rin Wingmare in the main deck, so I can cut that. Scrounger, Bone Crusher, Eidolon, Vortex. This deck is all over the place and I love it. Someone took the Thalia? Ah, oh, unbelievable. Blood Tithe Harvester. <laughs> oh boy, it's a 2 mana 3 2. I mean, if ever there was a deck to play it, it would be this. But even then, I just don't know if it's playable. I, I don't think it is. This is like the best possible deck one can hope for. Like 5 color Mardu aggro that's missing removal. And still, I don't think it's good enough. Alright, uh, I think I'm going to count Chromox as a land, so I need, still need to make some cuts. Um, honestly, I think I have to cut Gideon just because double white is difficult. Although, I have white one drops as well. Right now I have this and grab white. So one, two, three, four white sources. So I'm going to have to play like quite a few basic planes. Yeah, this is the risk. This is the risk. Um, I guess I cut Usher the Fallen because I'm just really unlikely to have white on turn one. And maybe for the same reason I cut Giver of Runes, but Giver of Runes is so good. Yeah, I think I keep Giver of Runes, and I just run 16 land. Uh, I think I have to run 16 land plus Chromox. So right now this would be 15 land, and that's too low. Uh, let's get rid of Eidolon of the Great Rebel for now, just because it's pretty tough to cast. 2-2-5. So I know my black fixing is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I think I can get rid of Stomping Ground, but I'm just going to replace that with a Mountain. So I have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 red sources. I think I can go down to 10. White, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 white sources. That feels about right. And then black, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That... Actually, it feels like maybe too many, right? It's just Dark Confidant, K-Command, and Snuff Out. So I can go down there and then up on these. And then I get rid of Stomping Ground, because I don't have any green, just for a basic mountain. Because Wooded Foothills can still just grab it. So now we have 16 lands, plus Chrome Mox as an extra accelerant. Yeah, pretty happy about that. See you guys round one. All right, we're here for round one against Factor Fiction Games. Third point, good luck, have fun. And we are here to do a lot of damage to ourselves. Let's keep. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is a... <laughs> this is a hand. Oh boy, is this a hand. We're gonna have to like... Shock ourselves. Oh man. Okay, we're playing against green. That's a pretty good matchup. We have Snuff Out now. We play Blood Crypt Tapped. We have Colgon's Command. We, we, we're gonna do all the things. Don't even worry about killing ourselves here. They don't do anything. Oh, do they have Channel? That would be unfortunate. Okay, um, I guess I would like to just play a Plains here. I don't really need anything else that we can jam Dark Confidant. Okay, so they, I mean, they didn't channel Emrakul last turn, so that's good. Green Sun Zenith for two, okay. Okay, well, Rafelos is definitely going to die. I'm just going to see what I'm going to draw first. Iron Sash and Layla. So let's just go with Layla, I think. Um, we're going to snuff out. I'm going to do a lot of damage to myself, but also a lot of damage to my opponent. And I think I just have to grab Badlands. Let's cast Snuff Out. Kill this. Then cast Layla. Hit them for a bunch. Chrome Marks? Scrub Land, okay. Can't play that, but that's fine. They're under a pretty big clock. I have Kolgon's Command to kill whatever they have. Uh, okay, you know what? That's kind of annoying. Garrick makes a beast. I mean, Layla's just going to kill the beast. Okay, Sylpha Spirit and Chandra. I mean, I need a land, but that's a pretty good place to 
be. Um, okay. I think I just swing at Garrick with both. That feels reasonable. Killing Garrick seems quite important. Layla's going to live no matter what. They're just going to block Dark Confidant. Yeah, I don't want to give them access to more mana. And I get a land. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, that goes down. And I think for the sake of mana efficiency, we're just going to go land Chandra Downtick. And then, I mean, my hand is full of just stuff. This deck is sweet. <laughs> I really like it. Corsair Crufix, Devoted Druid on top. Okay, I mean, we get to attack them. See what Layla hit. Layla's a messed up magic card. Like, she's hitting for five right now. What is this? Burst Lightning. Okay. When it falls to ten, uh, what do I want to do here? I think I like going Selfless Spirit. I kind of want to hit a land too. So let's actually uptick Chandra and cast Abbot of Carol Keep first. Okay, and then I guess we're just going to go with uh, Goblin Rival Master post combat. And then burst lightning their face. Trigger prowess. I just have so many cards in hand. And I've done 9 damage to myself. Okay, they have the relic. So this Colgon's command is going to be backbreaking. Yeah, okay. So we're, they're just like super dead here. Ooh, goblin guide. Okay. Uh, Whenever a card is exiled from your library. So we can uptick Chandra and just eat that thing. I think we're going to go Goblin Guide, Colgon's Command, Uptick Chandra here, just to hit them for damage. Cast Scarpy's Conjure, no, they take two, Layla gets bigger. So Layla is lethal, so they have to block her. Then I'm going to do this. Colgon's Command, destroy an artifact, two damage to any target, this and this. Target Prowess, cast this Goblin. They're super dead. Okay. <laughs> Against green, we want more removal if possible. I don't really have more removal, so our deck is... Well, you know, <laughs> this can sacrifice. Oh, it's so bad. But at the same time, it might be more useful than Lion Slash in this matchup. Because I, I just, like, I need to kill Rafelos on turn two if possible. Yeah, you know what? Let's do it. The main reason for cutting Lion Slash here is because my white fixing is not the best. So I'm not going to be able to, like, activate it multiple times. What is this? Ooh, this is a good hand. This is this is a hazard hand right here. Uh, I think this is tough. I'm on the draw, so if I draw a spell, I want to go like, hmm, this is tough. This is a really rough hand to mulligan with. I guess Giver Runes is pretty weak against green in general. So we could do that. Like, she lets me attack through for damage, but like, Hazard's already attacking through for damage. Arxene Revoker. Okay, so Revoker acts as kind of like Chain Lightning, so let's just play a turn one Scrap Heap Scrounger off the Chrome Box by excelling Chain Lightning. Yeah, because I could just Revoker Rafelos here, or whatever this is. Ignoble Hierarch, sure. There's our land, so we attack for three. Then we get to fetch up something, play Revoker. Ignoble Hierarch. Also, I just realized that Abandon Hope is no longer the first card, plus two maces, which is kind of fun. So they can still attack for damage due to Exalted, but they can't do much else. Corsair is annoying. He does block my Scrap Heap Scrounger pretty well, but Hazard hits for a lot of damage. They do attack. All right, I'm just going to fetch and then grab a Blood Crypt. Take the hit. Next turn, we get to Hazard. I put you on the bottom! <laughs> you know, that actually might help against Corsair, though. Hit you for five. Mm, they do have channel, but we're making their life total low enough that it won't work, hopefully. So next turn, I guess my game plan is probably just play Giver Runes and then discard whatever else I draw to hazard it, unless it's like a Chandra or something. They would... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, that's pretty bad. Jita is very backbreaking. All right. 3-5, can't even block it. Okay. So if they get... Okay, that's actually better for me. Because I was going to say if they get more counters on Jita, they could just kill Hazard right away. But this is somewhat of a problem. Because they can just gain life. Yeah, this is a problem. And the Jita can give this plus 2, plus 2. So this is going to become... Uh, 
a 4-6, so it survives Hazard. Oh, that card is a problem. What do I do here? I definitely attack with Scrap Heap Scrounger. Do I attack with Hazard is the question. Because I'm going to hit them for 5, they could just gain 4 life right back. Off the Jite. Or I guess... Yeah, they could gain 6 life right after they hit me. So, I think I'm not going to... Think about this. I'm going to play Giver of Runes for sure. I know what they're drawing, so Goblin Guide is kind of a safe attack as well. So I could go Giver of Runes, Goblin Guide. Then attack them with Scrap Heap Scrounger for sure. I think I want to attack with Goblin Guide and hold back Hazard because it does block the Courser. And if they want to save it, they have to use the last GT counter to buff it up. But then they get two more GT counters and they kill my Giver of Runes. What does this attack look like? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They chump block here. They take 5 and fall to 8. Then they gain 2. Oh, I don't like this. I think Giver Runes is going to be the answer. So let's sit back and just use Giver Runes to do a thing. Yeah, I think this is the key. Because now I can give protection from green so they can't get any more GT counters. So if they want to kill Giver, they have to like basically chump attack with Courser into Hazard Goblin Guide on defense. Courser is going to die. They're going to have to use the counter to even kill a thing and then like they're gonna have to kill giver of runes that way and then they won't have that many creatures in play oh exalted oh that's a problem i forgot about exalted okay well these still trade so basically i'm trading goblin guide for a gta counter does that make sense no i'm trading goblin guide for a courser of crew fix because hazard's trading for the gta counter right now and there's no way for them to save the courser here so yeah, I think this is a fine block. Okay. Maybe that wasn't a good block, because they could just take it and then keep GT counters. Yeah, I don't know, actually. I don't know. Okay, so they're killing Giver Runes right away. That makes sense, because they couldn't get any more GT counters if they didn't. They have Channel, which is hopefully useless. Ugh, okay. That's so annoying. Okay, Chromebox goes away. I need a Colgon's Command right now. Bone Crusher Giant is actually quite good as well, because I could just wing out and then Bone Crusher whatever they try and attack with the Jite. Or if they take it all, I can just kill them, I guess. <laughs> Alright, let's do that. No, I can't kill them, because they have Jite counters. That's right. Okay, they chump like that. So, how is this going to work out? Because I'm only doing 2 damage. They're going to equip Jite there. I kill that, and then I, they equip GTA to something else, and they're gaining 6 life a turn. They're going to play Garrick. Ah, but they're going to go Garrick into equip GTA, and they won't have the mana to re-equip. So that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what they're going to do. And then I would just, like, yeah, probably kill them there. So this is the game plan. Bone Crusher Giant. Yeah, Garrick, they're going to untap lands, equip GTA to, like, Acidic Slime. Okay. So they have Channel and One Unknown. And then this is just absolutely backbreaking here. Kill this. And now they're pretty much dead. That worked out really well. Because now they have to chump block. No, they don't. Right. GT can gain them life. This card is so messed up. Um, but yeah, I think I still just attack. They're kind of forced to chump block here. Attack their face and their face. I have two three power creatures. There's no point in swinging out a Garrick. They block there. That makes sense. They fall to four. I play this Bone Crusher Giant, or I can hit them down to two and they die next turn, but they don't because GTA counter. So we do this. So next turn, they're going to be able to make a beast and equip GTA to the beast. And they're going to be able to gain two life. But I have like a lot of lethal threats. So they need something that they can do for two mana or less. Or they draw like Primeval Titan and just die. You know what would be sick is like Primeval Titan fetching up two Radiant Fountains. <laughs> or like Primeval Titan fetching up Radiant Fountain Bounce Land and then replaying Radiant Fountain. Okay, the channel. Uh, oh, they can play like Woodfall Primus plus Equip Jite. And then if I don't draw a spell that I can cast, Hazard can't attack. That's something? Okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, right? Because they, yeah, that would actually be really sick. They draw Woodfall Primus. They have uh, 6 plus 4, that's 10 mana. So they can go 8 mana. No, 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 because they die. Right, right, right. They would need one more life. All right, wild match. See you guys next round.
Oh, right, we're playing against MGB831. Uh, I'm gonna keep this hand. If I get a black source, turn one Dark Combadon is gonna be amazing. If I don't, turn two Goblin Ra Rabble Master is gonna be very good. Showdown of the Scalds. So, I guess I'm just going to lead on Planes to play around Strip Mine, because that's the card I need least. I don't have any cards I can play turn one here, so we're just gonna wait. And if these are both sorcery, so there's no need to play instant here. Hey man, big fan of the content. Thank you. Good luck, have fun. So yeah, I'm a bit wary of Dark Confidanting. I also have Showdown of the Scalds, so I don't really need a Dark Confidant for that. So let's just go Mountain, Chrome Mox, the Dark Confidant. Play the Rabble Man. They probably kill Goblin Rabble Master here. Oh, they don't. That's really good news. And then next turn, depending on what I can draw, I can Showdown. It's pretty awkward when you show down and can't play land right away, so I think I'm going to wait. Hopefully they play something I can chain lightning. Or they do nothing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's not good for them. Uh, move to combat? Uh-oh. <laughs> this is really bad for them. Alright. They fold a 13. Um, I guess I'm just going to chain lightning their face. Get cards out of my hand. Oh, wait a second. They could have paid mana. <laughs> that was really bad, actually. <laughs> it worked out. But they definitely could have paid mana to chain lighting my Goblin Rabble Master. But I think they had to fetch before that would have worked. That's a, that's a, like, <laughs> that's part of the card that everybody forgets about. Lion Sash. Okay, so I could just firebolt the Lion Sash and just kill them here, I think. Oh, that's funny, actually. Alright, let's kill this. Um, how much? Yeah, they're super dead. Okay. In my own Lion Sash. Okay. They didn't even have to see it. That's unfortunate for them. So, they're like just guy stuff. Do I want like a disenchant? Not really. Okay. Uh, I feel like I have to mulligan this hand. I have three basic mountains and two cards I can't cast. What is, what is this? This is just the Caleb gets cards I can't cast deck. Uh, I guess I keep this and I get rid of Giver of Runes, because that card is particularly good on, like, turn one. Um, Silva Spirit, you know, you can play it later and it's not a huge problem. Uh-oh. I get the feeling we're gonna take turns killing each other very quickly here. If they play two red spells, I'm super dead. Uh, let's play this. Oh, they have Strip Mine, I'm also very <laughs> dead. So, I guess I play around Wasteland. And I just play a Swamp. Don't play two red spells, please. Okay, there's no ninjas in those colors, I don't think. Okay. Dak Faden. Charter Core. Oh, okay. Pretty good. Then I get Mana I love it. Oh, Dark Confidant. Oh, man. Uh, I think I gotta kill this Steamkin here. And I'm gonna do it on their upkeep, because Mana gets me either way. And they look like they're kind of splashing blue. Although Dark Confidant's really tempting. You know what? Let's just do it. I need the card draw. I don't think they're going to play two red spells. Mostly considering the way that they tapped for Charter Course. And the thing is, even if they do play two red spells, I need to hit lands for Chandra, and Chandra can deal with the Steamkin. Okay. So they had the Lightning Bolt. It's weird they tapped Passing Down Mountain. They must have drawn Bolt for turn. Okay, they're holding up mana. There's Abbott. I think I really do want to kill this. Do I play around Mana Tithe and Daze? Yes. We do it on their upkeep. Upkeep, we... Oh, actually, I should Colgon's Command here. Kill Steamkin and Mox Pearl. Okay, that went through. That's really good. So yeah, they clearly don't have Counter Magic, at least at the ready now. Which lets me just land Chandra. I guess they, no, Spell Pierce wouldn't do it. Okay, let's Chandra, and then I can cast Abbott. Let's just hit them for two. Nope, can't cast it. Last turn. Because playing Abbott and then attacking for two is fairly similar. Okay, they Oblivion Ring, the Chandra. I need to find a way to get rid of this. Whenever you uptake with Chandra, the card just stays there forever. They don't do anything. Okay, I'm very confused. Cryptic Command, maybe? Um, Let's go ahead and... Cast Abbot of Carol Keep. I have enough red mana, so I can do it like this. See what happens here. They can Cryptic, Counter Abbot, Bounce Chandra. 
So maybe I'm supposed to activate Chandra first. Yeah, actually, I think I'm supposed to activate Chandra first. Okay, they don't have Cryptic. Now I don't know what's happening. They can char Chandra? Venser Chandra. Okay, that's fine. Wooded Foothills, I will in fact play that for turn. Then I will stomp the Venser while they're tapped out, and then pass turn. And this is going to grab a Badlands, just, or a Blood Crypt, I guess. They bribery me? Okay. Um, Goblin Rabble Master is an option. Most of the cards they're getting die to Chandra, so that's encouraging. Dark Confidant's gone. I'm trying to think of what cards are good there. I guess they could get Lion Sash. That one's pretty annoying, but I could still just kill that with Chandra. Oh, spicy. Okay. That tells me they have playable cards in hand, or they just don't want me drawing Hazard. That's also an option. All right, let's get Blood Crypt tapped. Ooh, the Rabble Man. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four. Let's go Chandra uptick into Goblin Rabble Master. Yeah, I like that. Chandra, add red. Let's go Scrubland, Rebel Master. And attack them for a bunch. Do I want... Because they would have to play three cards. I don't think Hazard's attacking next turn. And I can chump with Goblin Rebel Master if I need to. Okay, they oust the Rebel Man. I still have to play two more cards here. And now I know for a fact I'm going to hit a Chandra, uh, right? This puts it second from the top. So if I uptick Chandra, I'm just hitting Goblin Rabble Master, and I know that for a fact. Petty Theft, the token. Okay. Do they have another spell or a land? They do. Wow. Well done. Chandra dies. Now we're in trouble. Because now they have an active Hazard. But I think I could have kept back Abbott, but then they Petty Theft the Abbott. Rexine Revoker doesn't help me a whole lot right now. Well played by them, though. Um, all right, let's go ahead and go Bone Crusher Giant. They have one card in hand. Then we'll just go with Selfless Spirit here. I don't have good attacks at all. And Abbott, I'm drawing Goblin Rabble Master next turn, so I'd rather just wait to use Selfless Spirit when I'm like swinging out with a bunch of stuff. And this can only block creatures with flying, yeah. Okay, that's a really good one. They can attack with Hazard and start chunking me down. I think maybe that would have been correct, but I don't think it matters too much. Um, we're going to do Rabble Man, and then attack them for two with Selfless Spirit because they don't have a flying blocker right now. Do I want to play Phyrexian Revoker? I don't know anything to name right now. They fall to 11. Like, I'm not going to swarm them. I think I'm better off holding a Revoker in hand. Okay, so they get a 2-2 Shaman that makes things... Ugh, getting Hazard was the correct play. That card's really backbreaking. They should attack with her now, though, I think. Yeah. Take 5. So this thing is make a thing that makes copies of stuff, which is really good against Blade Splicer. There's a Goblin Guide. Um, Reflection of Kiki-Jiki is what I name our Phyrexian Revoker. Oh, this is not a good position. Alright, let's go Goblin Guide. Swing out. Oh, actually, they can't play Petty Theft here. Let me think about this. So those have to attack. I could, like, block based on how they block. What if I swing out like this? What do their blocks look like? 1-1 one, one here. 3-3 three, three here. 2-1 two, here. 2-2 two, two here. And then I just nuke their board and they're left with just Hazard. I actually don't mind that. I have to get aggressive. I'm losing the late game, right? Oh, they have another spell. Okay, Containment Priest, I guess, is fine. Don't give them a land. Skyclave Apparition? Oh my gosh, okay. That's a problem. All right, that all goes through. But sitting back here and waiting is not going to win me the game. That's for sure. Oh, if I had a spell here, that would be so good. So, right now I'm hitting them for four. I keep my Selfless Spirit. You know what? I think I just let this go through. They go to seven. I keep my flyer, and then I can Phyrexia Revoker uh, Reflection of Kiki Jiki. They can Skyclave Apparition that, but at least they're doing that instead of something else. 
And now I'm kind of live to draw running burn spells. Oh wait, no, I have to chump block here. <laughs> yeah, wait, <laughs> I'm like super dead. <laughs> okay, they don't discard anything. They Skyclave Apparition. Oh, I'm just dead. 5, 6, 79, 10, 11. No, I'm not just dead. 5, 6, 79, 10, 11. I'm dead to hazard activation though. Oh, they don't have a card to discard. Okay. Okay, I take five. They go to five off Selfless Spirit. They have a bunch of blockers. I'm very much dead here. Snuff out. Destroy target non-black creature. Okay, so I can attack with just Selfless Spirit. And then just hold up Snuff out. I like that. They fall to five. They get Reflection of Kiki Jiki, which will let them make copies of stuff. And I pretty much have to snuff out whatever... Oh, no. I don't have to snuff out whatever they make a copy of. So I think I'm drawing live to Chain Lightning right now. I think that's what's happening. I don't mind them getting treasure off the Goblin Shaman. That's fine. They attack like that. I am going to... Block like this. Take three. I need the Selva Spirit for that last bit of damage. And I want to save Snuff Out to deal with blocking or defensive Brazen Borrower. But I may also be able to get them with killing Skyclave, getting a 2-2. Two -two. They'll have two blockers from my two blockers. No, that doesn't work. Rexine Revoker. Okay, that's fine. So yeah, we have to snuff out Brazen Borrower and draw exactly Chain Lightning or Incinerate. And then we win this fight. Which we have, you know, 1 in 21 or whatever chance. Yeah, so let me just run through this again. I can snuff out killing Skyclave. I get a 2-2. Two -two. They play a blocker. I swing out, and then I pretty much just die. If I save snuff out, they play Brazen Borrow on defense. I kill it, and I can draw Chain Lightning or Incinerate and win the game on the spot. So let's play to that. That works too. Okay, I guess I win. <laughs> and this is why you play to your outs, right? Because I could have snuffed out a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, but this one... Oh, they didn't... They didn't Brazen Borrow? Okay, well, that's even easier. All right. Well, I had them covered even if they played Brazen Borrow, but they definitely wanted to do that. Nice. Great games opponent. Um, yeah, I wanted to let them witness the full extent of my play, but that's okay. <laughs> we can win anyway. See you guys next round. While we're loading the next game, I just want to talk about uh, the importance of having a game plan. I think I can return a game while loading. O opponent played very well, by the way. I was pretty impressed. Um, like, them playing Brazen Borrow's blocker would have been good, but I think a lot of people just forget about this card. But the thing I want to talk about is the importance of having a game plan. Because essentially my game plan was, I have one evasive creature, and I need to do as much damage as possible with this creature to get their life total low enough so that I can draw lucky. Like, it is lucky that I top deck Lightning Helix. Although, now that I think about it, I have three live draws. Chain Lightning, Lightning Helix, Incinerate. And maybe one other. So like 3 out of 20, you know, it's like a 15-20% chance. It's not super high, but it's not super low. But if I'm not playing towards that outright, if my opponent's at 4 life, this game plan doesn't work anymore. If I sacrifice Selfless Spirit to like protect my creatures during that combat, this game plan doesn't work anymore. If I snuff out the Kikijiki or Skyclave Apparition for value, the game plan doesn't work anymore. You have to think about not just what's the most value, but what's going to get you closest to actually winning the game? Because sometimes you have to lose a ton of value. I'm going to mulligan this hand. Sometimes you have to like bleed a ton of value to get like, uh, to like advance your game plan towards winning. So the most important thing is having a game plan. I'm going to keep this hand and we're going to draw a swamp. I'm going to put a mountain on the bottom and absolutely nothing can go wrong with this. Oh no. Everyone else has power. Oh no. Can I draw a swamp? <laughs> Just don't be a GTA and we'll be happy. Oh, it's a batter skull? Actually, it's not that bad. We have Giver Bruins and Lion Sash, so that's actually not that bad. Oddly enough, I think Batter Skull token is black, so I can't kill it with Snuff Out. I need to draw a swamp for that too, but. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, that's fun. They have a Eater of Virtue and Batter Skull, so when it dies, they can get Vigilance Lifelink. There's the scrub land. So let's actually play Dark Confidant with Giver of Runes Protection. Pass turn. And I can snuff out the Stoneforge Mystic. I don't really feel the need. Like they just put in Batter Skull here. 
Yeah, it's a black creature. They equip Eater of Virtue, and then when the Germ Token dies, they get stuff. I have Disenchant in my sideboard, so I guess Colgon's Command is what I'm drawing to. But my opponent having essentially infinite lifelink vigilance creatures is going to be a problem. Okay, that's a good one to snuff out. They don't attack. Uh, okay, that's fine. I don't. I can cast this at any time. Snuff out's a really ridiculous magic card. Elite Spellbinder, Goblin, Rebel Master. So we're not playing the Rebel Master, that's for sure. Uh, I guess I'm just going to play the Spellbinder and see what's going on in their hand, plus deploy a Flyer. Because right now the board stays at parity, and the Flyer lets me break parity here. Oh boy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Their hand is loaded. Uh, I think I have to take Adeline. She's just ridiculous. They could still play her if they draw land, though. I don't think I'm winning this game. They equip there. That makes sense. Alright, beginning of combat, we kill this. So now do they attack is the question. Because I will take four and eat the Stoneforge Mystic. I kind of have to. Okay, so... Yeah, Stoneforge gets exiled and then I can just chump lock every time. Their last card is like the... Restoration of Ig Iganjo. Otherwise I can block block, take no damage. Because Dark Confidant might kill me. But I'm only going to seven. My curve is quite low. I think we gotta play it like this. Give Elite Spellbinder protection from white. Protection from white. So we kill that, it gets exiled. We fall to seven, which is low, but you gotta you gotta make some plays here. And they play that. So they get a basic planes. Next turn they can play Adeline and things get really bad. They drew Ah, oh, that's bad. Okay. Okay, two lands is not terrible. Um, I guess we're going to have to play Lion Sash because that way we can... Well, I guess they can't Restoration of a Ganjo, right? Figure of Destiny is also a problem. We're just like in... We're so dead here. Play Lion Sash. Play a Tapped Blood Crypt. And do I attack with Elite Spellbinder? I almost have to. I think I do have to. I'm not winning sitting back here. So they can discard a 2-drop and then get back a 2-drop, but I will eat it with Lion Sash. Aha! I will eat you. Okay. That worked out, actually. They just discarded a card for me. Because that is a May ability. They didn't have to do that. Interesting. They didn't want to play Adeline. I guess they just want to make Figure of Destiny in this huge creature. Which makes sense. There's a 4-2, and then it's like a... Just so big. 6-4. Okay. So now I have to double block the figure of destiny and protect my lion sash. Actually, this goes really well for me. I double block here. I take four down to three, but then I can grow my lion sash. Give this protection from white. It doesn't have first strike, no. Oh, but <laughs> the eater of virtue keeps exiling their creatures, so I don't have stuff to exile with a lion sash. That's unfortunate. Okay, Figure of Destiny gets exiled. Showdown of the Scalds. So they have Adeline they can play. This is going to get big, that's going to get there. I may just have to cast Showdown here. Although this can become a 4-4. Four, four. If I fetch, this can become a 5-5, five, five, but I don't have the white mana. Hmm. This is really tough. Because if this becomes a 5-5, five, five, we could just eat the germ token. I guess even becoming a 4-4, four, four, we can eat the germ token, right? So I guess in that regard, we're just going to play a Scrap Heap Scrounger. Or do I fetch to two with Wooded Foothills and play a post-combat Goblin Rival Master? No, because then they could just sit back and gain life. So I actually don't want Goblin Rival Master in play. Let's just play the Scrounger, play the Foothills, attack for three in the air, and then pass turn. So they have a 3-4 Vigilant that attacks and makes 1-1s. One okay. Lion Sash is insane. Like, holy cow, this card's good. Okay, they play Adeline. She's a 3-4 that's going to become a 4-4. Um, they have to attack with the Phyrexian Germ here, if they want to make a token. Okay, they don't. That makes sense. They're just setting up a big board state. So let's go down to two life. Yeah, I kind of have to, don't I? Having bad lands. And we're going to eat their hero. And we're going to eat our wooded foothills. We draw a plane. So right now they're going to get a bunch of extra attackers. What do we do about this? 
think it involves one, two, three, four. Ah, oh, this is so awkward. I think it involves a post combat goblin rabble master, but then they're gonna start gaining life every turn. Yeah, one, two, three. Play you. Play the planes. Pass turn. So now this can become a 5 5. So I don't even have to protect it from the germ token. It's a crazy game already. I've actually really enjoyed this game. There's a lot of like intricate decisions. I should have been dead like a million turns ago. But I like have been barely holding on by the power of this. This card is insane. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like scavenging who's on steroids. So next turn we can show it onto the scalds. And then I could start putting counters on Lion Sash off Showdown of the Skulls cat spells. That's fun. Oh, that's a really good draw. Okay, they make a soldier. At least I can kill Elspeth next turn, but this is a pretty big problem here. They just don't attack. Yeah, this is a big problem. All right, let's eat. The Dark Confidant. Hazard. Okay, Hazard's quite good. What do I do here? <laughs> this is like one of the most crazy games I've ever played. Um, I can swing out with Hazard, because I can't let them keep Elspething. Um, am I dead? If they Elspeth, they're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six attackers, and I will have one, two, three, four blockers. So I am dead if I just pass turn. Actually, this is really bad, right? Because I. This makes an attacker, does this make something attacker? This doesn't attack. Okay, wait, wait, this is not enter attacking. This enters attacking. So if I don't do anything, they have one, two, three, four, five attackers, and I'll have one, two, three, four blockers. So I go to one. So I can play an attack with Hazard, or I can play Shield onto the Skulls. I think getting Hazard into play is a bit more important because this forces a chump and then gets rid of a soldier token. Although at the same time, yeah, that eats the soldier. But next turn, Elspeth goes up to six. Maybe I have to showdown and find removal. I don't know what to do this turn at all. And I can't, I think I'm gonna showdown because if I give her runes, I can't give protection from black and white. So I can't like do anything like that. They have one card in hand. I don't know what it is. Oh, this is tough. I think I'm gonna showdown. I think Hazard gives me short term value, but I'm probably not going to be able to attack with her like the next couple turns. And that's the card. Oh, actually, that's really good. Okay. I can do this. Coligon's command. We're going to kill Batter Skull and do two damage to the soldier. And then I can attack Elspeth with the soldier and the Lion Sash. I have three blockers, one has flying. I mean, they have to chump block here. Goblin Rebel Master doesn't do anything, but I think attacking with Lion Sash makes sense. Because I have three blockers, they're going to have three attackers. And this gets permanence into their graveyard for Lion Sash. Okay. Oh. Oh, they have four attackers. Oh, now I'm dead to a removal spell. Oh, this is so good against Goblin Rabble Master. Oh my gosh, that's a big problem. Gideon Blackblade, okay. Oh boy. The 6-4. I'm going to have to lose a creature here. I mean, I guess I want to lose Goblin Rabble Master. I'm surprised they didn't give it lifelink. Because this doesn't actually do anything right now. I guess lifelink doesn't do anything either. So they do that. I block like this and this. And I might just, like, want to let Goblin Rebel Master die because of Architect of Restoration. I think I actually do that. I recast a spell, I can put counters on stuff, so I get to go... Land... Revoker... Put a counter on... Uh, the Elite Spellbinder having four toughness is pretty good. This is gonna name Eater of Virtue. Or Gideon. I think I'm killing Gideon this turn with the Elite Spellbinder. Yes, yeah, so let's name Eater Virtue. Then play Hazard. One, two, three, four. This is going to put a counter on the Spellbinder. Then I'm going to attack. They're going to have one, two, three. Yeah, then I can kill Gideon here. Okay. <laughs> Gideon down, and then I attack them in the air and start killing them. I can equip Lion Sash to Elite Spellbinder and hit them for like a ton of damage. And like slowly win the game that way. 
Pretty happy with how I've played this game so far. Wow. <laughs> I won that game. I mean, the I think the pivotal turn was going for Kolagon's command off of Shodan of the Scalds instead of casting Hazard. And that's why I thought through it so long, because like both decisions were very important. I knew Kolagon's command was the best possible draw, so hitting towards it just gives me a chance to win the game right then. Because the longer the game goes, the worse it is for me. Wow, all right. Really happy with that. Lion Sash is a messed up magic card. I will be taking that much higher from now on. Uh, they have a ton of Planeswalkers. I feel like this is probably a disenchant matchup with Batter Skull, Eater of Virtue. Uh, just those two things for now, but it seems good. Scrap Heap Scrodger seems actually a bit worse. Because they have so many four toughness creatures that I'm not in love with it. Uh, Thundermaw Hellkite is actually tempting. They have so many Planeswalkers and being able to just like nug them in the air seems really good. I think I'm going to cut Vortex and bring in Thundermaw. Yeah, that seems good to me. Condemn is tempting. They have like Hero of Bladehold, but that's a bit too late. Uh, do I want Condemn? I mean, Giver Runes was insane that game. Hazard's good, Layla's good. Rabble Master's really bad against them, so I guess I can do this. Yeah, they had like three different creatures that Rebel Master just gets absolutely destroyed by. Yeah, sounds good. We'll keep. Kill your Figure of Destiny. Kill your Mother of Runes. Student of Warfare. It's gonna get Firebolted. Oh, oh my gosh. That last game might be one of the best games of Magic I've played in a while. I mean... I haven't played Magic since like last November, so <laughs> I guess that's not saying too much, but I'm still pretty happy with it. We do have the classic Dark Confidant Hazard Wombo combo. Rex Porcelain Legionnaire. Uh, I think I'm fine with that. I just want to draw action. So I think I'm going to run out the Dark Confidant. I'll take the three. Oh, I am hurting for red mana now, but I guess I can do that next turn. Play this. Okay, it's not Adeline, that's good. Take three. Skull Clamp, okay. That's actually decent in their deck. Oh, I hate that. I hate that so much. All right, I was my Dark Confidant. I do draw Shodan of the Skulls. Um, guess I'm gonna cut them off of their Skull Clamp possibilities here. I also can't afford to keep taking three damage every turn. Locks Jet into Planeswalker. Hopefully their hand is just dead and they crack Silent Clearing. Or do nothing. Maybe they have Restoration Angel. Okay. Um, I guess for the sake of mana efficiency here, we gotta go like Dark Confidant. Uh, yeah, Dark Confidant Goblin Guide. And part of me really doesn't want to attack. Because if they had literally nothing to do with their hand, then they would crack Silent Clearing. So I'm feeling like they have Restoration Angel or something. I'm not gonna attack. It's just like... Oh, even that. Yeah, that's very telegraphed. Okay, that's really good for them, though. <laughs> we're, we're in a bad spot. So they can, like, Skull Clamp that? Oh, this is so bad. I need to find, like, a way to kill Skull Clamp or the Wandering Emperor? Emperor? Yeah. But I do have Dark Confidant, which is a ton of card advantage as well. And they make another Samurai. They equip the Clamp, most likely, and then attack. Okay, we need to find sc Snuff Out really badly. Interesting. Uh, I feel like I should be blocking this. Goblin Guide's not doing much. Although, with Showdown of the Skulls, I, can guess, I guess I can make Goblin Guide into a 3-3. Three, three. Um, I think I should be blocking this. Snuff Out? Land to land. Alright, we need to play this card. We're in a really bad spot. Okay, I have... First, Lightning is a card I can cast. Um, I can trade Dark Confidant for Samurai Token here, which I actually don't think is the worst. I think I am actually gonna, am going to do that. We're going to attack the Wandering Emperor right now. They can block with a Samurai Token, but if they block with Hero of Bladehold, we can Burst Lightning them. Oh wow, that worked even better. Okay. Um, they still do have Hero of Bladehold, but next turn I can kill that with Lightning Helix Burst Lightning. So... That's okay. And I could just play this whenever. I guess I just kill this now so I don't get mana tithed. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, that doesn't work. Um, I can use Burst Lighting with Kicker. I think I'm just taking a bajillion damage this turn. All right. I'm going to regain some with Lightning Helix. So I can go like Lion Sash. Okay, they Skull Clamp there. So I take 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 damage. 
Not the end of the world. Okay. Uh, I still can cast... Wait, oh, that's... Wait a second, what? <laughs> wait, wait a second. <laughs> Maybe they just say no. Oh. They gotta say no here, right? <laughs> wait a second. What? <laughs> okay, um... Beginning of combat, do I just... What do I do now? I mean, I take the... No, 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 I burst lightning because I could hit snuff out now, and that's insane. Why did they do that? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Snuff out? I don't hit snuff out. Oh, I hit condemn, but that doesn't work. All right. The thing is, they get to draw a ton of cards off of this skull clamp, but if I hit snuff out right then and there, the game is just over. All right, a lot of damage. No problem. They play Figure of Destiny, another Skull Clamp target, deal. All right, Dark Confidant, do not hit Thunder My Hellkite. Rexine Revoker on Skull Clamp, oh my gosh, wait, this is so good. Um, okay, this is really, really good. Let's go Mountain. Revoker on Skull Clamp? Yeah, Revoker, off of Dark Confidant, Skull Clamp. Then I get to go Lightning Helix. I tapped wrong. Oh, I tapped wrong. Okay, we're in trouble. Why did I tap both my red? <laughs> and this is, these go away at the end of turn, right? Yeah. Oh, why did I tap wrong? Okay, um, that's a problem. Well, I guess we're gonna go Lion, Lion Sash into Lightning Helix. I'm gonna grow this guy. So that way I can trade with the hero. And then I Lightning Helix the Figure of Destiny. And this is going to put a counter on the Lion Sash. Or three. Uh, actually, Dark Covenant is going to be big enough to block here of Blade Hold. I'm going up to ten. I take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just put the counter on Dark Confidant. No, because he needs to die, actually. Oh, this is, this is so rough. Why did I misclick? Or mistap? This blocks and eats here of Blade Hold. And then I guess I just lose my Lion Sash. You know what? That's actually fine. Last turn. Yeah, if I just kill the Hero of Blade Hold there, I'm in such good shape. Okay, Double Strike is fine. If they do that with Hero of Blade Hold, that's really not a big deal. Okay, so now I just get to trade off Dark Confidant. Okay. They attack, we block here. Uh, can I afford to take eight? No, 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 I die, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I die, so... I can't, I guess I have disenchant, so this actually works. I just block like this. I take eight, go to like no lives. <laughs> I think I'm super dead here. Play Usher, they can soul bond, double strike, whatever. Equip clamp there, okay. That works for me, I suppose. Whenever I cast a spell this turn, I put counters on stuff. Um, I think I'm dead. I'm at two life here. I get to go mountain. Two, three, four. Four, play Hazaret, disenchant this, and then die. Right, they have, yeah, okay, we're dead. We're dead. All right, game three. I, I just misplayed that one very, very roughly. Um, yeah, I'm glad I have disenchant in the deck. I shouldn't have shown it to them, but I think it just runs back. Oh, you know what? I should have brought in Lurus, actually. Lurus is pretty sick. This hand's good. I'll keep this one. So they have Skull Clamp, they have Batter Skull, they have another thing. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> that shows me for tapping my basics first, but we can do this. They're going to play thing, we Firebolt it. Figure of Destiny. Uh, Yeah, I'm okay playing off Curve because they have so many things that I want to Phyrexian Revoker. I'd rather see what they have before doing anything. I can bluff a Mana Tithe. Selfless Spirit, I can incinerate that. I guess I just Chain Lightning it now. Then I can hold up Incinerate. I don't want to play Abbott until I absolutely have to. So we'll wait. Ugh, that's the card I was scared of. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think I absolutely have to now. Land? Disenchant. Well, I can't play that. But I guess it's kind of good to not draw it right now because they're not doing anything too scary at the moment. And I have, um, I have Caracas. Oh, <laughs> okay, we're in trouble. Um, so I could just protect Adeline. Yeah, okay, sure. 
Oh boy. Okay. Like an incinerate. I just gotta take it. This Caracas is particularly brutal. Okay, Bone Crusher Giant is something. Guess I'm going to. I'm not gonna attack. I'm just gonna pass. I have double burn spells here. I want to lead with Bone Crusher Giant because I don't think they're gonna Caracas in response to that, and I would like to maintain this guy. But we're gonna block, then shock, and then they bounce, and then I shock again. Actually. Yeah, I lead with Incinerate. Okay. Yeah, we do that. I block here. I wait for the damage to go through. Now what do they do? Oh, this is even easier. Uh, but they have Batter Skull? Oh my gosh. Alright, losing Disenchant was particularly brutal, but now I get to go Stomp on Adeline. And then, what do I do about Batter Skull and Incinerate? I guess I have to take a couple hits off Batter Skull. Um, we're going to go Phyrexian Revoker on Eater of Virtue. Because that seems important. I can incinerate, but I guess I'm just going to cast this Bone Crusher Giant. Because that blocks the three ones or whatever, the one ones. I have very little time left on my clock. I can F6 through here. <laughs> it would be wild. I think the play actually is for them to equip Batter Skull to one of the humans. Uh, I don't know. That's a bit risky. So, I think I take the first hit. I don't want them to give them the, the easy line of just equip Batter Skull to something. Oh, they're gonna get back Selfless Spirit? Oh my gosh. Okay. Unbaked Canyon. Yeah, their deck's really good. These matches have been interesting. I kind of wish I could see what it would look like if I... They have another spell? Oh, come on. Uh, I wish I could see what it would have looked like if I had tapped correctly in the last game. So, I can Firebolt? The Student of Warfare? Because they're going to get back the thing and I can't really incinerate, so... I guess I kind of have to do this. The problem is now they get back Selfless Spirit, my blocks are really bad. So what's my best draw? Thunder Maw? Thunder Maw kills Selfless Spirit for free and blocks Phyrexian Germ Token. Oh, that's also a problem. Okay. So they could just make that into a 4-4. Well, if they don't do it right away, I can incinerate and kill figure. So that is something. So now I block the germ. Then they just equip Batter Skull to figure destiny probably. And then I have to draw um, a black spell. Okay, they don't do anything. Let's fetch up Blood Crypt. Turns on Snuff Out. I think, uh, again, Colgon's Command is like the best thing I could possibly draw. Goblin Guide's pretty bad, but that is what it is. Let's go ahead and play Selfless Spirit. I mean, Goblin Guide is at least a creature that I can play. Do I even attack with it? I don't think I do. I can't let them draw in cards. But the thing is, like, sitting here waiting is just going to kill me. So they're going to probably level up Figure of Destiny here, and I incinerate in response. Okay, now I kill this. So now they don't get to uh, grow Batter Skull. Figure of Destiny is dead, and now I'm drawing live to Colgon's Command again. Ugh, this coming back as a 3-4 that makes things, though, is also brutal. I wonder if Revoker was supposed to name Batter Skull, because now they just equip it to something, and that's, like, so bad. Yeah, alright, I'm taking five. No blocks. I need to draw another creature before I sack self a spirit and do stuff. There's Snuff Out, that helps. Problem is I kind of have to Snuff Out the Architect of Restoration. No, I don't. Okay, we have a game plan. I don't really know how it works, but... I can double block the Architect, block here with Selfless Spirit and sack it and go to like, what, <laughs> two? Leonin Relic Order eating my Phyrexian Revoker is very problematic. No, it's not. Wait a second. This might be the best thing ever. Okay. This only comes back... If I kill it now, it goes away. So they can equip Eater Virtue right now, but I can kill the Human Token and stop Batter Skull from being able to be activated. So that's pretty... Good, I suppose. Yeah. Okay, so I let them attack. They get a 1-1. One, one. Wait, this doesn't work. <laughs> this doesn't work at all. I'm <laughs> just, like, really dead. I thought my... I, I needed this in play for my plan to work. Because uh, I can kill this and reset Batter Skull, but that doesn't do anything. Alright, they make a spirit. I guess there's only one block I can make, which is, like, this. I just gave him a 1-1 one, one for free. But I guess that I just have to do that. 
It's not, yeah, I gave him a 1-1 one, one for free, so this is pretty bad, but we suck this, give indestructible, and I kill this. Yeah, slight misplay there. I don't know if it'll matter. If I die to the 1-1, one, one, I die to the 1-1. One, one. Now it's pretty much Kolgon's command that is my only possible draw. Yeah, I actually do die to the 1-1, one, one, I think. Alright, it didn't matter. Great games, opponent. Oh, I forget when you concede first, it's bad. That's, you know what, if I'm going to lose a match... Oh my gosh, <laughs> let me call... Great games. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with how I played those. There was a couple misplays, but like, those games went on forever. There were so many decision points. You're going to make misplays at some point. You try and minimize them, but you just have to accept that you're going to make mistakes at some point in a long, drawn-out match. Those games were amazing. I enjoyed playing them. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching them. This deck was really fun, and I'll see you next time. If you made it this far into the video, you're clearly enjoying the content. So if you want to help support me being able to make more content, there's two ways to do it. The first is free and very easy, just following me on Instagram. Uh, you get, you know, to see cool stuff like this cat made out of trees or this dog that's an island. Um, some very interesting or trippy videos like this one, which uh, <laughs> it's not for everybody. Um, the other one is just going to my store. Um, I sell art like the ones I've shown. Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff there. You can shop the collections and see things like this. I'm selling t-shirts uh, and I would really appreciate it. Thank you.